The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past In a dreamlike sequence, the legend of the Triforce unfolds, showcasing the ancient tale of power, courage, and wisdom. A timeless battle between light and darkness plays out. Three pieces, embodying power, courage, and wisdom, unite to create the Triforce. A hero emerges, wielding the Master Sword, destined to protect the realm. A dark antagonist, seeking dominion over the Triforce's might, schemes to claim its power for selfish gains. The struggle between these forces shapes the destiny of Hyrule, foretelling a chosen child who will draw the Master Sword and bring balance. A voice pierces through. Hey, hey, wake up. Link's eyes open. As Navi the fairy wakes him, Link rubs his head. You're going to miss your morning duties. Navi's reminder jolts him into consciousness, telling him not to forget his lucky sword. Link heads out and meets other Kakiri children at the Deku Tree. Late as always, Link emerges while the morning song commences, and they're assigned their daily tasks. The other kids of the forest find him strange as he doesn't speak and push for Link to tackle the tough job of cutting grass, isolating him. Link is seen watching under his favorite tree as the other children play and laugh, seeking a place to fit in. After a grueling day, disheartened, as his eyes close under his favorite tree. Cut to Hyrule, Zelda's eyes open and she rushes around, seeking adventure without her father's guards. Disguised in white, she climbs down the secret path and enters town. She accidentally causes chaos, pursued by guards, she dives into a chicken coop. She's brought before her father, who, urged by Ganondorf, restricts her to the castle. Ganondorf emphasizes a prophecy about the chosen child wielding the Master Sword and bringing power through the Triforce, reminding that Zelda is that child. Distraught, Zelda is led to her chamber. Meanwhile, a curious scene unfolds as Ganondorf stands before the Master Sword, engaged in an eerie dialogue. Within the blade, an imprisoned malevolence yearns for freedom, its sinister whispers seeking release, and that the time is near. Zelda plays her harp and sings about being free, yearning to explore alone. Emotional, she runs out, heading into the woods. At the same time, Link, atop his tree, converses with it about finding his place. Both run towards each other and bump into each other. Link listens as Zelda expresses herself, wanting to be free, wisely talking herself into returning. As she runs, she drops her Triforce necklace. Link goes to sleep, feeling encouraged by Zelda to find his courage. Link wakes with energy ready to speak to the Deku Tree. Upon seeing Link's bracelet, the Deku Tree advises him that it's time to find himself. His quest must start at the Lost Woods, suggesting answers lie within, despite the journey taking several years. As Link and Navi navigate the labyrinthine expanse of the Lost Woods, they sit and find warmth under a campfire playing his favorite lullaby. The ethereal surroundings trigger a profound awakening within Link's memories. Visions of his past cascade through his mind, revealing a poignant tale. In the flashback, Link witnesses his mother's fateful journey into the heart of the forest. She sought solace from the ancient being known as the Great Deku Tree, who proclaimed that only children and chosen ones could enter this sacred realm. Pleading for guidance and protection for her son, she beseeched the tree's aid. The benevolent Deku Tree agreed, and as Link's mother departed, she blossoms into a tree, becoming the very sanctuary where Link found solace throughout his childhood. Unbeknownst to him, Link sought refuge under the comforting embrace of his mother's spirit, unknowingly conversing, shedding tears, and seeking shelter beside the tree that had grown from her essence. Though good and bad, little did he realize, this tree was his mother, a constant presence throughout his life. A poignant moment unravels as a scene materializes, depicting one of the branches of this sacred tree being the wooden sword Link carries as a protective talisman. As Link snaps back into reality, he's full of anger and emotions run as the Lost Woods, shrouded in mystical allure, manifests an apparition of Link's darker, malevolent side, poised with hate and anger asking Link to not let go of his past, and for him to grow darker with emotion. Link then rejects these emotions as this dark Link decides to strike. As he closes his eyes waiting for the attack, he opens his eyes to find a warm pink-haired figure resembling his mother. She says, I've missed you Link but I'm always here. Overwhelmed with emotion, Link rushes forward to embrace the vision of his mother, shouting his first words, Mum. Emerging from the woods, the tender reunion fades as Link transforms into a young man, setting forth toward Kakariko village, driven by a quest to unearth the enigmatic truths of his past. We arrive at Kakariko Village, Link seeks information about a symbol haunting in his vision. His quest leads him to encounter Talon, who offers help and a horse for 100 rupees. As Link looks into his bag he only has 10 rupees, only enough for a pony ride. Talon then provides a wager, if Link can hurt his chickens in a certain time he'll give him a horse, but if he loses he'll have to give all he has and help around the ranch. As Link catches all of Talon's chickens, Talon, upset with losing, sends his daughter Malon to aid Link, who, sensing his genuine intent, 
guides him toward Hyrule Castle, divulging a secret entrance nestled within a tree's embrace. Meanwhile, in Hyrule Town, the vibrant aura of festivity envelops the atmosphere, signaling the grand celebration of Zelda's 15th birthday. Link strolls into the festive scene, perplexed by what he's seeing. Link queries a local salesman about the occasion, only to learn it's the fateful day of the legend, a chosen day anticipated for the princess to draw the sword within the castle. Despite the town's jubilation, Link, uninterested in the spectacle, retreats to the concealed entrance leading to the castle. Intent on unraveling the mysteries of the symbol his mother had fled from, the scene shifts to Link's determined descent through the castle's clandestine passages. Link walks into an old part of the castle that looks abandoned as he finds himself in an old library of time, picking through the endless books, coming across one with an image of his mum with her friends. Inside the throne room, anticipation swells as Zelda, now older and poised for her destiny, confronts and attempts to wield the Master Sword. The King of Hyrule and the Royal Guard stand watch as silence falls over the gathered crowd. Her efforts falter, the sword resisting her grasp, shocking onlookers and casting a shadow of uncertainty upon the eagerly awaited moment. Ganondorf's sudden uproarious laughter pierces the room, freezing everyone in place. In a horrifying turn, Ganondorf's laughter transforms into an act of treachery as he swiftly thrusts his weapon into the king's heart, silencing the room with a cruel and fatal blow. As he waited years for the power of the Master Sword only to be in vain and with a chilling declaration, he seizes the Triforce piece and commands his cohorts to raise the castle to the ground. As the monarch falls, leaving Zelda aghast, her world shattered as Ganondorf callously orders to leave Zelda to burn as he makes his way to the two other Triforce pieces held in other kingdoms. Meanwhile, Link, hearing screams and seeing fire from the castle, reacts swiftly. He pulls an old shield from the library and jumps into the window. Using Navi's fairy magic he gently glides and confronts the guards in a frenetic battle. Armed with his wooden sword, Link engages in a fierce struggle, outnumbered but resolute. In a dramatic turn, his wooden sword ignites into flames, a startling transformation that leads him to seize the Master Sword. Caught off guard, Zelda cries out in alarm, warning Link against wielding the legendary blade. Undeterred, Link draws the Master Sword, enveloped in a radiant blue light as he transforms into the prophesied Chosen One. Zelda stands bewildered, the castle engulfed in flames as Link, now empowered, unleashes a whirlwind of attacks, defeating the assailants but inadvertently propelling himself and Zelda into a rushing water stream. At Lake Hylia, a scene unfolds as a fisherman pulls both Link and Zelda from the river's depths. Curiosity brimming within her, Zelda seeks answers about Link's peculiar destiny. The sight of his burnt wooden sword weighs heavily on Link. Despite her initial resolve to go it alone, recognizes the urgency of uniting the Triforce pieces before Ganondorf's grasp tightens. With a reluctant yet determined nod, she invites Link, now equipped with the Master Sword, to join her. Their path leads them to Goron City, where an unexpected encounter occurs. As they go towards a cave, an amazing smell leads them to Gore, the king's son, who loves crafting culinary delights but is away from his father's stern demeanor. They beseech an audience with the king, a figure as unyielding as the stone he governs. Unswayed by legends, the king yearns for solace, unable to find relief. In a poignant moment, Link plays a tune, a melody long forgotten, and the king's stony visage softens, joy rekindled after ages. Despite his initial hesitation, Link tenaciously confronts a daunting trial of courage against a rock-made dragon, ultimately triumphing and securing a Triforce piece. Recognizing the looming danger of Ganondorf's approach, the king urgently urges their swift departure, seeking the assistance of his son. In a demonstration of distinctive Goron hospitality, the son adeptly curls Link and Zelda into a ball, sending them tumbling down the mountain in a surprising and unconventional mode of travel. As they descend from the mountain, Gore, admitting his aversion to water and inability to swim, opts to stay with the pone of the horse, eager to prepare a meal after the dizzying roll. Meanwhile, Zelda and Link press forward into Zora's fountain, their journey leading them to a heart-stopping plunge down a thundering waterfall. Amidst the roar of the waterfall, Zelda and Link find refuge within a cave, where the vibrant strains of rock music fill the air. They encounter Zora Tribe, a solitary figure immersed in his musical revelry. Through a musical mishap, Link steps in with his flute, surprising Zora and eliciting his excitement at finding a kindred spirit. King Zora, reminiscent of a bygone hero, recognizes Link's resemblance to a dear friend from the past. Link, hungry for answers, is told that tales shall be shared when the waves have settled, tasking them to acquire the Triforce piece guarded by a water dragon within the water temple. King Zora bids them haste. Link dives into the hidden temple and walks toward the water temple. 
As he is confronted by a water dragon protecting the Triforce piece of wisdom, he wields the Master Sword, confronting the Guardian after attacks doing no harm. Link realizes the futility in harming the solitary creature and chooses to serenade it with his flute, soothing the dragon into a restful slumber. King Zora, pressed for time, urges their departure. Unified in purpose, Link, Zelda, and Zora forge ahead, meeting Gore and Epona along the way. Zora, leaping onto Gore's back, recalls their childhood camaraderie when their parents were part of a musical band. As they grasp Ganondorf's trap, Link ascends, and they strategize to conceal the pieces, knowing the stakes. Venturing through Gerudo Valley, Link and Zelda witness a stark scene of destitution and despair. The once vibrant land now languishes in poverty, its people gripped by fear and deprivation. Their perception shifts as they realize the supposed barbaric ruler is, in truth, a solitary figure yearning for a flourishing homeland. Determined to break this cycle of desolation, they make their way into the fortress, navigating through the remnants of a shattered castle. Amidst the crumbling ruins, they stand face to face with Ganondorf. The confrontation erupts into a fierce clash, each strike echoing the intensity of their struggle. With each strike, Ganondorf explains his painful past, having no mother or father, and being the only male Gerudo, he was bullied and laughed at. Wanting respect and power, he turned to Hyrule Castle, wanting to bring back honor to his people. He sneaked into the throne room to wield the Master Sword. However, this was not to be, and as the guards raced to throw him out, the king saved him, reminding him of an old friend. He took Ganondorf in and trained him, pushing him to become a child of war and enslaving his people. As the years faded, Ganondorf became his main guard, training young Zelda, but this wasn't enough. Zelda interjects, declaring that the pieces he seeks are not with them. Ganondorf's laughter echoes, revealing a revelation that shatters perceptions. The Triforce pieces possess no innate power. But in actual fact, the three pieces are within each of us. And that until all of us are together will the powers ignite. As the power is shown, a sacrifice of pain is needed to wield it. As he is then shown his mother and father, shocking reveal that the King of Hyrule was his actual father and that he killed him not knowing. Drowned in his anger, Ganondorf confronts the torment of his past. The Triforce then reveals itself as the final piece falls into place, an otherworldly transformation seizes him, metamorphosing him into a formidable dragon. As Link and Zelda fight to save the people of the town from an enraged Ganondorf, Link then helps save Zelda. With Zelda relinquishing her notion of being the Chosen One, placing her faith in Link, the stage is set for a pivotal turn. Link, falling on his knees not knowing how to save everyone and wield the true strength of the Master Sword, as he looks down, he is shocked to see his mom's pink flower, severing his emotional ties to the past, embracing his destined role as the embodiment of the legend. A radiant aura envelops him as he wields both the Master Sword and his maternal blade, commencing a climactic confrontation against Ganondorf. Blades clash amidst a surge of luminous energy, a testament to the culmination of their strife. Empowered by Zelda's unwavering support, Link harnesses newfound strength, sealing Ganondorf within the confines of his own sword. Thus concludes the harrowing conflict that plagued the land, brought to an end by the unity and valor of those who held the essence of the Triforce within them. As Zelda painstakingly gathers the concealed Triforce pieces from the guardianship of the Deku Tree, Link's path winds through the dense forest, leading him to an unexpected discovery, the home of his long-lost parents. As he steps inside, the house has images of a life he long forgot, images of him and his parents, walking into a baby room with all the toys from his past. Amidst the remnants of a life he never knew, Link stumbles upon a vibrant blue outfit that once belonged to his father. Draping himself in its familiar folds, he detects traces of a struggle etched into the very fabric of the house, guiding his gaze toward an enigmatic tree within the dwelling. Intricate carvings adorning the trunk scenes of his mother and a baby Link and unraveling the mysteries of his past. Bewildered by these revelations, Link uncovers obscured images beneath a layer of leaves. A keyhole is shown glowing as the Master Sword is drawn to it. As the Master Sword opens the keyhole, its trunk parting to reveal a cryptic smash emblem. Before his eyes, the symbol pulsates, and, enveloped in its radiance, Link vanishes. The final credits roll with Zelda, dressed in a white ensemble, standing before a shimmering Triforce portal within the Temple of Time, ready to find Link. 